we've identified six different uh, kind of puzzle pieces here um, for our serverless data pipelines. Uh, the first one, our little purple one there, is the files landing in cloud storage. So, you know, when we're talking about data pipelines, right, our, we've got files usually that are coming from somewhere. We've got data that's coming from somewhere. We're going to talk about this more in detail in just a minute, but but uh, we have to be able to to have that that data available. Um, past we've used FTP. There's lots of lots of ways to do that, but that's the first thing. We have to have a place for our files to land. Um, so we're going to talk some more about the cloud storage. What's available? Um, what are some of the things that we can do there? Um, automation. If we want to have serverless data pipelines, we want to be able to get uh, you know out of the the manual all the manual things that go along with this. We want to automate this. Uh, we want to talk about the automation. And so there are things that we can automate via cloud messaging. So in Azure, Google Cloud, in AWS, there are, there are things we can leverage event notifications um, so that uh, we can be notified when there are new files uh, to, uh, to process. Um, pipes. Uh, in Snowflake, we have pipes to load data from the files into the tables. We're going to talk a lot about that today. Um, so that's the, the facility that we use within Snowflake to actually take the data from those files, actually get it into the tables in our Snowflake data state um, so that we can transform those and consume those and do all the things that we want to be able to do there. Uh, we're going to talk about streams um, and table data tracking and change tracking in Snowflake and, and what Snowflake streams are there are some cool things. Um, streams have been around for a while. We've been using them for a couple of years uh, with clients, uh, and there were a few limitations. Some of the, those limitations are gone. There's some really cool new things that are going on with streams, um, and it, one of them being, like we talked about in the uh, uh, what's new, being able to put a stream on a view. And so there's some really cool things there. So we're going to talk about streams they're very very important and it's it's very important to kind of understand what a stream is what it's doing what's going on with the stream so we're going to talk about that today then there's after the we have the data in the tables we have the tracking that allows us to know that we've got new data or we've got changed data in a raw table we've got to have the there's the transform and the merge right, part of our pipeline right there's uh, we might be putting this data into uh, into a, a data warehouse, uh, uh, like a star schema, um, facts and dimension tables. We might be putting it into a one big table model. We might be loading it into a data vault. Uh, lots of different types of models, but, but there's a lot of transformation that goes on. Maybe we're just uh, conforming a bunch of data into a conformed ODS or a data lake. Uh, type layer. So there's there's some transform and some some merge curation and we want to make sure that we're doing this properly in in the Snowflake world um, using CTEs um, so that we're doing things in memory, we're doing things in an organized fashion, uh, using merges in Snowflake. The the Snowflake merge allows us to do a lot of things and gives us a lot of control of how we're we're transforming data and, and moving data inside of the Snowflake data estate. And it also allows us to do, if we construct our merges properly, it allows us to be loading these tables in a really uh, important and effective way that, that will lend itself to better performance on the querying side of this and, and less cost. So, so that's an important part. And then the last thing, um, and we'll be spending a lot more time on this and actually have some examples of this in the next pro talk, uh, cause there's so much here, but actually orchestrating this with serverless tasks. So somebody might ask, well, what's the difference between Snowflake tasks have been around for a while, but what's the difference between a task and a serverless task? And so with the serverless task, what we can do in Snowflake is we can actually set it up. So let's say we had a whole, uh, flow. A whole process flow. There were a bunch of tables that we needed to. We're loading a bunch of tables into raw. We needed to take that data, move it through maybe a data lake, uh, ODS type area into uh, a number of uh, star schemas or one big tables models, those types of things. Um, and so, if we set up a bunch of tasks in Snowflake, we'd have a bunch of parent and child tasks. Obviously, we, we process A, and then once A is done, we can process B and C, that type of a thing. There's a hierarchy there that we can build in. So let's say that we've got a hierarchy with a whole bunch of our table loads. Well, some of those 
some of those processes, like if we're we're loading a, a data vault, pit tables, um, that might be a little bit more compute uh, uh, intensive than doing a simple load of a small table. A simple load of a small table, we might want to use an extra small warehouse. Um, loading a pit table for a data vault, uh, going back and do something that maybe we want to use like a, a medium warehouse or, or something like that. With One of the cool things with the serverless tasks that's different than the regular tasks is when we set up serverless tasks, we tell it by default the warehouse size to start with. And then Snowflake over time, it's going to look at how these tasks are performing, and then it's going to adjust the warehouse. So we are we don't have to completely control the warehouse and say all these tasks, we're gonna set them up and they're all gonna run on my task warehouse, which is set to be a size medium. Um, and so basically Snowflake can manage those warehouses and based on on those uh, uh the, the the processing power that we need and, and uh it, the serverless tasks can manage all of that hey folks thanks for checking out this cut from our broadcast to see the full show click on the link in the video description also check out our learning center which has white papers events live streams and short explainer videos on a wide range of data management topics and of course if you like our content, please share it on LinkedIn. That really means a lot to us. Thanks again for checking us out, and we hope to see you in our next broadcast.